Hi, everybody, and welcome to UP Wild Church's Wilderness Prayer Service on Praying from the Heart, Prayer of the Heart. Um, for those of you who have joined us before, you always get a new background, so it's kind of fun to see what the background is going to be each time. Um, for those of you just joining us, welcome. Uh, let's take a moment to say hi to each other. If you're watching this live, you can do it in the chat box. Just say maybe your name and where you're watching from. If you're not watching this live, you can just do that same thing in the comment box. And I wanted to let you all know that you are watching this uh, live from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which is the unceded ancestral land of the Anishinaabe people. And welcome to everybody. Uh, UP Wild, for those of you who aren't familiar with, with us, is a nonprofit, nonprofit cross-denominational collaboration where we create a space to reconnect with our ecological roots, which has always been a part of the Christian tradition. And there hides this wealth of wisdom on our responsibility to be stewards. And who agrees that right now it is time, it is past time, to bring this authenticity forward? Just raise a hand, give, give a thumbs up. It is really time. And there's a lot of us who are hungering for this type of wisdom that we bring forth in our services. Um, I also recognize that some of us might not come from the Christian tradition, and I just want to make, make it clear that everybody is welcome here. We try to create a really welcoming space, and it's through our diversity of experiences where um, we can really connect with each other and share with each other and learn from each other. So welcome to everybody tonight. The way that our services usually work is that we begin with a breathing meditation. Uh, we move into a wilderness reading. And then we have the nature video portion of our service. We say prayers together and we end with a closing poem. So let's take a moment to sort of come into our space when we'll do a breathing meditation. Tonight we're going to take a virtual walk together in the Ukraine. Um, and... I'm getting better at trying to figure out how to do this. We normally meet outside, so, but this is the next best thing. So we're going to walk through the Ukraine as we allow ourselves to just center into this space and let's do our meditation. You all have decided to give yourselves a beautiful gift this evening. You've taken time in the midst of all this unknown to sit in silence and in stillness. And what this gift of stillness offers you is the opportunity to quiet your mind. It is in the quieting of the mind that we are able to connect with our heart. So let's take three deep breaths. Let's breathe in life-sustaining energy that exists all around us. Let's breathe out anxieties and our worries and our tensions. Let's breathe in the love that undergirds all things in this world. Breathe out all that no longer serves us. Let's breathe in peace, calm and serenity. Breathe out negativity and fear. One last breath, actually, to breathe in. Like the wind blowing through the leaves of a birch tree. Breathe it in. And breathe out our thanksgiving for being here together in this moment. So tonight's um, wilderness reading is from Benedictine Sister and Theopon the Recluse. I've mixed um, them together. It begins with Sister Joan's words, goes into Theopon's words. And we are going to explore the question, how do we pray from the heart with their wisdom? And so let's switch over to our stars for this reading. So our reflection starts with a story, actually. 
It is said that when St. Teresa of Lisieux was a little child, her father took her outside before bed every night to show her the stars. He told her the name of the planets, how they were grouped and how far they were believed to be, and how everything in the sky was the work of God's hands. Reflecting in later life on these occasions, she judged that they marked for her the beginning of her prayer life. She was not conscious of setting her mind to pray, and there was no set form of her prayer. But in retrospect, she thinks that the majesty of God so impressed itself on her young mind as to evoke a response, which must have been prayer, through awe and wonder. How should we interpret the expression to concentrate the mind in the heart? The mind is where the attention is. To concentrate the mind in the heart means to establish the attention of the heart and mentally see before you the ever-present and invisible God. It means turning to God with praise, thanksgiving, or petitions, while at the same time taking care that Nothing else should enter our heart while we're doing that. The purpose of prayer is to transform us to the mind of God, to see the world as God sees the world, to practice the presence of God, to put on the heart of justice, of love, of compassion, and to transcend the ways of this world and become renewed at the depths of our soul. Every spiritual tradition on earth forms a person in some kind of regular practice designed to focus the mind and the heart. To interrupt the day with prayer is to remind ourselves that we aren't alone, to give us strength of heart to sustain us through all we encounter daily, to for a moment, breathe God in and hope somehow to learn how to breathe God out as well. So for us, in this time of chaos and self-isolation, it may be as simple as saying no. No to checking your phone one more time. No to reading one more article before bed. No to spending the afternoon binge watching Netflix or letting our child sit in front of three Disney movies. And every time we say no, we say yes to looking up at the stars, looking out at the sun, going for a walk to show our child the birch trees and the leaves the tree frogs, and the red robins. We say yes to petting our puppy under its chin, giving it our full attention. Yes to checking in on the growth of that sprout coming up from the spring ground in our gardens that we're working on right now. I know some of you are working on your gardens right now. We say yes to quiet time with God, not our phone not our screens, but to God. Yes to prayer for other people, even when we can't see them, taking the time to say their names in our heart and concentrate our energy on them, to send them healing energy and to ask God to be with them, for God to heal them. Yes to maybe for some of us for the first times in our life, resting in our heart by allowing ourselves to come out of our restless minds. And as we ponder this for ourselves and what this means for ourselves, um, think about how you can put this into practice in your day. Um, we're going to think about like I just said, no, how we can say no to certain things in our life. We all have those things. I say that as a person who's struggling myself with saying no to those things. And for us, we probably have different struggles. We, have, we all have different passions. Praying from the heart 
is when we let go of those passions, those addictions really, and we try to allow and connect with God who exists in the stillness and in the silence of this world. So this video is actually shot by one of the members of UP Wild Church. It was all, um, the footage is all from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. And what he did is he put words to, he took, well, first he took time away from the screens and he went out into nature and he captured the nature. And then he put words, his own reflections on um, what that time was for him. And I'm showing this because it's a beautiful example of what we all can do um, every day in our own ways, in our own backyards, and in our own experiences. So it's nice um, that he put this together so that we can just sort of meditate on this, on praying from the heart. It's called Prayer of the Heart. And here we go. I almost don't want to believe you. Because I don't want to believe that you can be here right now. That you'd want to be around me. That you'd give me anything. That you would actually meet me when I'm like this. Because I am probably impaired, not myself. I'm under the influence and not able to use my reason. But I'm still compelled to try to believe that this is in fact happening. That you're, you're here. That's what I've been told. That's what I'm supposed to believe. You feel all things. That you're present. That you're a treasury of all blessings. That you're the giver of all that is good. That's what I pray. For you to come. time and the way I want you to come not when I'm dirty not when I've fallen not when I'm like this I've succumbed to these lesser things don't come now Tricks on you. 
to deal with it. Maybe it's something I hate. I sound like a character out of some play. Questioning all the various influences that apparently Okay. I think um, the person who made that for sharing that with us, and we all we all have the ability to make the choice uh, at any moment to pray in our heart, whether we're in the middle of Times Square in New York City, whether. We're in our house and we have toddlers running around and we escape to the bathroom for two minutes. Whether we're driving in our car just to get out of the house and we pull over to the side of the road 
or whether you're like many of us at UP Wild where sometimes we need to go outdoors to feel something, to have that quiet time. Let's put it into practice that one of our goals for this week will be to say no to something and to say yes with connecting with our heart and connecting with God. That'll be our challenge. Let's do that together and let's also say some prayers together. If you have your candle going, you can move it forward for this time that we will pray together for prayers of the people. We thank you, Desert Mother, for in the valley of dry bones you create hearts of flesh quickened by the Spirit's breath. We thank you, wise sister, that you walk in cloud and fire with your lost and faithless people. We thank you, son of heaven, that you empty yourself of might and glory and set your face towards a cruel empire with many despisers. We welcome you as God's own fool whose cross brings to nothing the violence of this world and reveals another wisdom outside of the city walls. Therefore, with all who follow your way, with the traitors and tax collectors, the soldiers and the enslaved, and all who caught a glimpse of the glory and the humanity you shared, we bow our head to God's own holiness revealed in sweat and, cheers, in sweat and tears of challenging times. After each of these prayers, you may say, creating God, hear our prayer. We give thanks for our earth, which is a sanctuary filled with God's presence, a home for us to share with all of creation. Creating God, hear our prayer. Teach us how to be more mindful of the rest of your congregation of mammals, insects, fungi, trees, and plants, to act more like caring stewards rather than justified dominators of these natural and spiritual resources. Creating God, hear our prayer. We pray for all the first responders, those who are providing aid to people in need, that they may be granted your protection along with those that they are serving. Creating God, hear our prayer. God of love, incline your ear to those who are displaced from their homes and seeking welcome and relief. Walk with refugees who are filled with fear and uncertainty during these days. Sustain migrant workers and come to the aid of all who have lost their jobs and who are hungry, don't have food to feed their children. Protect them and the children who are separated from their families. In the midst of turmoil, send your presence. Creating God, hear our prayer. Help us to entrust our burdens to you. Help us to see all parts of our lives as sacred. Strengthen us for service. Take our hands and lead us on. Creating God, hear our prayer. And this is a time for you to be able to share your intention or your prayer in the comment box or in your silence. We'll take this time to do that. And in special thanksgiving for all those joining us and for their families and for all the intentions and prayers that were just shared, we say, creating God, hear our prayer. So we have our closing poem, which is a closing uh, saying uh, tonight, which is one of our wilderness desert mothers. Her name was Ama Sincletica. And she was a desert mother. I'm not sure which century she lived in, but it was a long time ago. And she has this to share with us tonight. In the beginning of a life of prayer, there are a great many battles and a good deal of suffering for those who are advancing towards God. And afterwards, great joy. 
It is like those who wish to light a fire. At first they are choked by the smoke and cry out. So we also must kindle the divine fire in ourselves through tears and hard work. For as a flame increases as it is constantly fed, so prayer made often will draw us ever more deeply to God. So I wish you all the perseverance as you enter into the wilderness or the desert of your own hearts. As you say no to the things of this world, of our culture, that hold down your spirit, your true nature. And you say yes to that which gives true life. Thank you all for taking this time. You just did it. You took 20 minutes out of your day to reflect in some prayers in community together. So thank you for taking this walk with me and for the rest of UP Wild Church. Our next service um, is going to be June 12th. So please uh, check our website, which is upwild.org, and we'll have more on um, what the theme will be. But it will be, that's a Friday, June 12th at 6 p.m. Eastern, same place, same time. Um, and if you have anything you'd like to share in the meantime, please feel free and send us a, me a message through our website as well. If you liked this video after this ends or um, if you're watching it live you can share the link with others and all of our services are on the YouTube channel all of our past services are also on the website under the video section so you can watch them at your own leisure whenever you might need one or you can share one with a friend we've done different themes this past couple months so please take a look at that if you're new to UP wild and thanks again for all of you for being here with us. We hold you in deep prayer until the next time we see each other. So thank you, everybody. And also, of course, thanks for bearing with us as we figure out um, how to do things online when we were really doing things outside. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you at a next service on June 12th. Goodbye.